the hour. Let's now focus on matters clean energy. And to many, the water hyacinth is a notorious invasive waterweed that possesses or possess a threat to the marine life, especially in the lakes. Now, the plant chokes off fishing routes, leaving communities that depend on aquaculture in economic frustrations. But with the growing demand for green energy, the water hyacinth is now proving to be a renewable energy gold mine. And residents of Dunga Beach in the county of Kisumu are reaping big and green from converting the invasive plant into clean cooking fuel. Here's Gloria Milimo with more on that. Like a carpet of death, this free-floating plant has engulfed large parts of Lake Victoria like a cancer. In fact, it is considered a curse by a majority of residents who depend on Lake Victoria for their livelihood. As generations of locals continue scratching their heads over the weed's existence, scientists have been seeking alternatives of reversing its spread through sustainable utilization. Yeah. One such option is biogas production, which seems to be working. The result is the green energy which is transforming the lives of residents of Dunga Beach in Kisumu County. Until now, most of them would ordinarily use charcoal or wood to cook their daily meals. Aina moshi, napika sembamba, kila kitu nisafi kwa nyumba, hakuna ugonjwa, ukitofautiana na ile ya kuni na makaa, una, unaona kama ni, eh, ni chipa. But how is this invasive plant a source of renewable energy? We caught up with Enoko War, a biogas plant operator at Biogas International. The company is located in Kisumu County. Enoch explains how the once condemned plant has become a beacon of hope for many from the lakeside city. We decided to use the um, uh, water hazard and also fish offal, which we get from the women doing uh, fish deep frying, that's the fishmongers. Uh, we are trying also to clean the environment by collecting the fish offal and also food remains from the restaurants around. Experts explain that hyacinth leaves can be used as biogas fuel because of its cellulose, nitrogen, essential nutrients and high fermentation properties. After the installation of the system, uh, you feed cow dung first. The cow dung will bring the right bacteria, what we call anaerobic bacteria, which does the actual digestion of what you feed, that's the feedstock. Then afterward you can feed any other organic matter, but for us here in Dunga we feed uh, water hyacinth, which we get, we collect from uh, the lake or the shoreline, depending on where it's available at that moment. We bring it to the, sister, to the site, I mean, then uh, we shred with a shredder. The system behaves like our stomach, where you have to chew food first. Uh, after chewing food now, the rate of digestion can be uh, faster enough. For the gas to be fully produced, it has to undergo four stages, as explained by a war. Unlike in other biogas productions, where the system is usually fitted underground, this specific digester is on the ground surface. It makes it easy to detect leakages and even relocate it in the event of floods, which lead to fluctuations in water levels in Lake Victoria. The gas produced can be used for cooking, drying fruit and vegetables and fish in the event there is no enough sunshine. A war, however, warns against using it for lighting purposes given the power voltage it produces. As the demand increases in the modern world, the energy sector is still dominated by fossil fuels, which is considered one of the largest contributors of greenhouse gas emissions. Experts have been calling on the world to embrace cleaner energy options. Statistics by the World Health Organization indicate that more than 3 billion people globally cook with solid fuels such as charcoal, traditional stoves and coal on open fires. This produces high levels of carbon monoxide, which kills about 4 million people each year. Here in Kenya, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry says 14,000 Kenyans die annually from indoor air pollution. Currently, about 50 homes in Dunga area are connected to the biogas system, with a complete kit estimated to cost about 65,000 shillings. The Dunga plant produces between 45 and 50 cubic meters of gas per day, which is equivalent to 12 kgs normal gas. Gloria Milimo, KTN News.
All right, uh, 